uh, we're talking today about worksheets and really um, for, for such a potentially dry subject, I think worksheets are actually super exciting. And um, I don't know to what degree I'll be able to demonstrate that today, to, um, what I'm about to say today, but I would invite um, any of you to um, consider worksheets as a design tool. Um, I think we really tend to think of worksheets as a, maybe a presentation tool. Uh, an example here is our, um, this little um, um, standard abbreviations sheet that is, you know, that is just a, that's just a, where's my open command? Oh, well. Anyway, we'll just double click on it. That'll be good enough. So that's uh, that's just a worksheet that I'm just using the uh, worksheet functionality simply to uh, lay out um, this, uh, you know, a bunch of text in a column fashion so that it's tidy and I can do um, a little bit, little bit more formatting than I could with a text block. So that's just the most basic thing, of course. And then, um, you know, uh, it, it gets a little more complicated from, from there. So uh, the thing that's interesting about worksheets is that they're, they're bi-directional. They query the model and they report uh, what they see from your Vectorworks file. And um, in some cases, you can use them to make uh, certain design decisions or at least to inform your design decisions. So the probably the, the easiest and sort of more most straightforward other than just a text formatting worksheet to consider is a door schedule. So here's a very simple little house uh, that I was working on a few days ago. And um, so let's look at what it would take to create a door schedule. So um, Francois, I'm not seeing the, I'm only seeing you. What if, what if I need to punch on here? Oh, uh, it says that I'm screen sharing. You are screen sharing. Zoom has changed the format. Just took me five minutes to find everything as okay. well. Oh, go to uh, maybe under Zoom, go to uh, your meeting. Uh huh. And so, huh. Up in the Is upper right, I have something. Up in the upper right, there's a new icon that's swipe, swipe, swap shared screen with video icon. Okay. Sorry about this. No, it's all right. Everybody else can see the, the Vectorworks file, except Don, you've lost focus <laughs> on it. Yeah. Yeah, it, okay. took me, no, it took me five or 10 minutes, but up in the upper right, I hit that little, it looks like an envelope or something. Oh, okay, all right, I'll keep looking. Or you can just uh, use the uh, command tab to tab over to the actual Zoom application. And um, uh, under, uh, window, you might be able to find it or, um, yeah, I think that would be That's under. Mine window. was hidden under something else. So it was in two screens and hidden under something else. It's like split apart. It's very different. Okay. Not a problem. Not a problem. Yeah, or try, try move focus to next window. Okay. Under window. There it is. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Awesome. Good. My bad. Yeah, no worries. Okay, so um, so the first thing is uh, just a simple door schedule. Now, obviously, I already have a door schedule in this project, but you know, just bear with me. So um, your your basic re your basic reports and schedules, Vectorworks has a lot of those already baked in. Um, so that's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, so let's just go to um, tools under the tools menu there. And then there's a reports. And then I'm going to create a report. Um, there's any number of um, reports that are already sort of prepackaged for me. All right, so I could do a custom report or I could do a pre-formatted report. And you can see under the pre-formatted report, like I'm scrolling for a while here and um, here, here you go, here is a door schedule. So I just scroll down to door schedule and I'm just gonna hit okay. 
Uh, I'm going to rename this one as a uh, uh, door schedule new because I don't want to overwrite the one that I have. And there's the door schedule that uh, Vectorworks creates for me. Um, it is primarily designed for um, a highly detailed scheduling of doors that you would find on certain commercial projects. Um, so let me uh, increase the zoom here. So uh, worksheets have their own little menu. So when you open a worksheet, you'll see here's the door schedule and I've got file, edit, view, insert. So all of the worksheet functions and um, uh, relevant commands are up over here within its own menu. It's, you're not going to find any of these things in the Vectorworks um, menu. So uh, let's go over to uh, view and I'm going to zoom up to say 150% so you guys can see. Right. And um, there's just a lot of fields here. So I've got the width and height, thickness, configuration, uh, top shape, you know, door frame, uh, frame details, fire rating, and so forth, many of which I don't particularly need for this um, scale of a project. But um, if I'm sort of just dipping my toes into the world of uh, uh, automatic scheduling. Um, this would be a good place to start and then I could just edit this to uh, be whatever uh, font that I liked and sort of the graphic attributes uh, so I could, uh, you know, perhaps um, get rid of this um, column here and uh, 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 just keep the size and door style and so forth. Um, if you're if you're doing that, if you're starting with this with this uh, uh, pre-baked um, schedule or report, um, you know the temptation is to just go to here to the C column, for example, and just uh, delete that column because you don't need it. So why not just delete it? What I if you're new to <clears throat> worksheets and you want to start by just modifying one that you get out of the box, what I recommend that you do instead of deleting these columns is to just minimize them to zero. Um, and so you just highlight the column and if you can, I don't know if you can see, but as I move my cursor to the right hand edge of the C column here, I get this little left right arrow with a vertical bar down the middle and I can just grab that and I can stretch it and make it really wide or I can also make it and collapse it down to zero. Um, and so that column is still there, the data is still there, but um, I can't see it. Now, um, the tricky part is that having now reduced it to zero, I don't have an obvious way to get it back if I decide to get it back. So the workaround, if I ever want to get it back, is to just select the two adjacent columns, and B and D, and then um, I could just um, stretch those. And as I stretch them, then all of a sudden, all three of those columns, because the C column with a, with, a, with a column width of zero is, um, you know, it's, it's in there when I select it. And so when I stretch the other two and reset their width, then, then C comes back. Anyway, that's a, that's a little bit of a digression, but th this is just the easiest way that in moments, if you're using Vectorworks parametric um, doors and windows, you can generate um, a schedule uh, just by uh, invoking this, um, uh, this command from uh, the tools uh, to create a, a report. Uh, and, uh, and you're, you're at least halfway to the races. Um, I say you're halfway to the races because of course, you've got to have objects that are schedulable. So let me go over here to uh, save view. Uh, I want to move that to the bottom. And I've got a little uh, working view of my plan. So there's my plan, right? And so I've got a variety of door objects here. Here's one, here's another, right? Um, and um, if I look at these in the object info palette, there's a couple of things of interest. Um, one is that I've been using door styles for 
this project, which is a topic that we covered a few months ago and um, probably one that we'll revisit again soon. Um, super useful to use door and window styles um, in Vectorworks, essentially uh, you set up the door or the window uh, the way that you want it with just the right um, thickness and jam conditions and trim and manufacturer and so forth. And then you save it as a style and then you can replicate it and reconfigure it um, as you wish. But the, the, some parameters you can define as editable and others are fixed. And uh, that just makes it really easy to have consistency across all of your units. But um, back to scheduling, you'll notice that this door over here, if I scroll down here in the object info palette, you'll see that under the ID tag, um, it says on schedule, right? And uh, below it, it says uh, show tag in 2D. And if I click on that, then the tag will show up. Um, in older versions of Vectorworks, uh, on schedule and show tag in 2D were one and the same thing. Uh, that if you clicked on schedule, you would get a tag in plan and you could define, of course, what, what class that tag belonged to so that you wouldn't have to see it in all of your views, but it would be there. Um, Vectorworks, uh, one or two versions ago, introduced data tags, which are uh, another topic of discussion, uh, few months ago and also very cool. And um, um, so I won't go too much into those now, but suffice it to say that for now, on schedule and show tag in 2D has been disambiguated. If you have the show tag in 2D, you'll get a tag, but it will be on the design layer. Whereas the data tag is something that you can place in a viewport annotation for a particular door or window. So that's super useful. So this door is on schedule. And so if it's, if it's on the schedule, then of course it will appear on the schedule. Um, this doorway, this cased opening here, um, some people like to schedule their cased openings. I don't, um, but uh, if you do, then you would put that on schedule. But because I don't want that to show up on my schedule, then that has been deselected. So back to the worksheet that we just created, you'll see that um, if I highlight this uh, row for number for row number four, right? Below it are 4.1 through 4.16. And um, in each of these cells, um, there is uh, a little bit of uh, vector script. So, uh, this uh, first cell, A4, shows up, and it says equal, open parentheses, door, dot, ID, prefix, close parentheses. Um, this is why it's really nice to start with one of the pre-made uh, schedules as a starting point as you're getting used to this, because uh, you don't have to remember all of these esoteric little snippets of script. So what, th what this is basically telling um, the schedule is in every subcell, the 4.1 through 4. Point whatever, to go ahead and uh, list what the ID prefix is for all of these doors. Now, um, I don't use ID prefixes for a residential project where there are 16 doors, uh, but you know, you might. Um, uh, and then you can also have a suffix, which I don't have on this. Um, here's the width. So uh, the little piece of text or script for that is equals door dot width in parentheses, right? And you'll notice it gives me the total width of all of my scheduled doors, 64 feet, 10 inches. Not particularly useful information, but you know, there you have it. Um, and all of this is in uh, essentially a database header. So under view, if I hide my database headers, then you won't see those. But if I check next to database headers, you will. And then you may ask yourself, well, what, what controls which items populate these cells? Like what if I have a window that is window number five, for example, why, how does Vectorworks know to put door number five here instead of window number five or light fixture number five or 
wall type five, whatever. So if I right click on the, the uh, little uh, four here, you'll see that it shows up as a database because it's actually querying the model and the data in it and displaying it according to a record format. That record format is attached to the door um, and all of that's you know, pretty invisible to the user at first anyway. And you'll see that uh, below that, there is um, some criteria. So I essentially from by right clicking on this uh, number four here, I'm able to filter what kinds of objects are going to populate this particular schedule. So let's look at that. Let's edit criteria. And if you've ever done a Boolean search in Vectorworks, like you've done a, a under tools, you've done a, a custom selection, for example, right? This will look very familiar. So uh, the criteria for this database row is to show every object that has the door record present, right? So all of the Vectorworks plugin object, door plugin objects have this door record automatically present. And in addition to that, show those who uh, have a field value um, on schedule is true, right? Um, you remember a few moments ago, I showed you that case opening and there I had on schedule deselected. So there's a, a record format that is buried in that uh, parametric door object from Vectorworks. And it has a field called on schedule. And if you check that checkbox, then that field gets written as true. And if you have it, that checkbox deselected, then that field is written as false. So here, is a, here are all the possible um, uh, criteria by which I could search. So field value, right? Let me cancel that because I just reset it and go back to edit the criteria. I don't want to change the field value, but on schedule, here are all the potential fields that are, go into a Vectorworks door. So we're starting right here, door. That's, those are, that's the, record format, and then each of these sub items is one of the fields in that record format. Um, right, so here I would have 2D threshold class, but that's not what I want. I want on schedule, so I'm gonna scroll down the many options until I find on schedule is true. Uh, notice that Vectorworks is giving me a little preview here and it's telling me you've got 16 objects that meet that criteria of 16 objects that have the door record attached to them. And of those that have the record attached that have the little on schedule checkbox clicked, that's true. And so um, that gives me a quick little reality check, right? Like if it, if it said something like 15 and I wasn't quite sure how many doors I had in the project, that might be plausible. But if it told me three or 300, I would know that something was amiss, right? And then I can ask the schedule to report um, objects that are buried in symbols or that are within other plugin objects, which is very unlikely in this case, or that are in a viewport annotation. And so here, um, it's, uh, it's not showing what's in the viewport annotations or plugin objects or in symbols. And so if I wanted to have a, um, uh, maybe uh, an array of door elevations that were um, showing my door types, I could go ahead and uh, maybe put those inside a symbol or inside a viewport annotation and not have Vectorworks um, um, show those. Um, I could also add additional choices here. So for example, I could only look in certain layers or certain stories, right? So if I had a really large project, I might have a separate door schedule for uh, one building and uh, that existed on multiple layers. And so I could identify which layers it got reported on. But, uh, but I wouldn't, then I could have a separate door schedule for another building on the same site, for example, right? 
Francois, are you putting the schedule on a design layer or sheet layer? Um, I, I put the, the schedule on a sheet layer, but really the schedule, the instance of the schedule that shows up on the drawing, let me cancel out of this and navigate back to my floor, to my cover sheet. Here it is on a sheet layer. But that's just one instance of the schedule, right? I could have a bunch of them. I'm just, I'm just um, um, option duplicating. So I've got, now I've got three instances of my door schedule, not the one that I'm showing you, right? Uh, and so it's there on the sheet layer and I can just format it however I want. Another uh, nice feature is that um, schedules are now scalable. So they now have a scale factor. So if your schedule is just a little too big to fit on your page and you don't want to bother to reformat everything, you could just make it say 0.95 scale. Um, that's that's kind of nice. So, um, all right, so, so that's kind of a, a quick introduction to what's going on here. We're basically, we're creating a, a uh, using the worksheet to query a database. In this case, we're filtering out just the data that's attached to door objects. And that's what's creating our, our door schedule in a nutshell. So um, I uh, kind of makes more sense for me to use a slightly simpler schedule. So this is the exact same data, right? These are, these are all the same doors. You can see I have uh, 16 doors here. And I'm trying to make this a little bigger to make it easier for everybody to see. So I have uh, 16 doors. So if I were to edit uh, one of the doors, it would change it on this door schedule, also the schedule that I just showed you. The schedules are just reporting what's already there. If I turn on my database headers, you can see, look, there's the, there's, in this case, it's row three, not row four. And I could go ahead and edit the criteria. And um, here I'm just, I didn't bother to tell it to look for objects with the door record uh, attached to it because um, the field value on schedule, this is um, the on schedule field that already um, belongs to the door record format. There's an on schedule field for the window record. Here's the window record. I just typed win and got to window. And uh, you can see that there's, a, there's an on schedule for windows as well, right? But I'm not asking it to report that field value. I'm asking it to report the field value on schedule specifically for the door schedule, for the, uh, the door record format. So I just typed door and now I've got to do a little bit of scrolling. And there it is on schedule. So that's the on schedule that I'm asking it to report. So I just have one fewer line. Um, and you can see that I'm also getting 16 objects here. So all of those cased openings that I didn't click on schedule on, those are, those are not being reported. Now, um, remember earlier at the beginning of our talk, I asked you to consider that schedules could be, you know, uh, design tools. So let me go, while I've got this um, schedule open, I'm gonna, Zoom it back down a little bit, and I'm also going to uh, show you the uh, floor plan, right? So a, a good a couple of other little things that are pretty nice. If I hover over this um, row, so this particular door, I can right click on that cell 3.1, and you see that there is a select item command. That is super useful. So I can be anywhere in Vectorworks and anywhere in my file and I can open the door schedule and I can go and right click on that and it will immediately take me to the door in question. It'll center it on the screen. Um, 
doesn't matter what, I mean, I could have done this from a sheet layer and it would kick me over to the design layer. Um, and that's really nice when I've made the mistake of having seven different doors with the exact same number. And I'm like, okay, wh which door number one is this? Um, so um, so that's, that's really nice. And you can see that this is in fact a five foot four by six, eight door. I have no idea why that is. That's kind of almost, um, almost begging to be uh, corrected. So let me go ahead and change that over here from a five foot door, a five foot four door to a six O. And you will see that when I um, do that, there we go. I just typed in six and hit return. The door reshapes and lo and behold, it's um, uh, six feet wide. So uh, some of these are bi-directional, right? So I can uh, choose here, there's a type and it's a swing by part. And you can see that that field here is grayed out, but I do have, if I um, click on that, I'll need to hide my database headers. There we go. So from in here, I should be able to, no, it's not letting me, of course, because I'm doing a presentation. So of course it's not gonna cooperate. Well, under normal circumstances, if I wasn't presenting this to you, it would allow me to change the type from a swing by part to some other door type. So, so this is a pull down menu that is actually getting the configuration from right over here, right? So I could change it from uh, a swing by part to something else. Um, it's reporting the door's thickness, so I could change it. Uh, that's probably unlikely that an exterior door would be an inch and three eighths. It really should be an inch and three quarters, right? Now, it's not letting me change that one. And that's because this is a parameter that is defined by the door style. So I'm gonna go over here to edit the style. And under general, actually under uh, leaf, right? You'll see that it th the thickness is set to one and three eighths and it should be one and three quarters. And moreover, I would like the option to be able to edit that so a little detour through uh, to uh, door styles here. And so now that I've done that, this is now becomes an editable field. And so I can change that to an inch and three quarters. And if you notice the door thickness actually changed, right? So uh, let me pin this down so it doesn't keep opening and closing. So certain objects, depending on how I've defined the door style, certain of these fields may be editable, like the manufacturer or the model or the material, and other things may not be, like you just saw the, the door thickness, right? So all these should be an inch and three quarters. So here I am, uh, I could even just copy that and uh, make all of these exterior doors an inch and three quarters as they're supposed to be. No, not one eighth, no. Now oh, that's interesting. Wonder why it's doing that. Anyway, so there we go. So I've I've used the schedule to correct all of my doors, so they are now um, all the correct thickness, which you know that's a good thing. Um, so the so the schedule, uh, the worksheet is in this case because it's a database is bidirectional. And, uh, and it will allow me, allow me to edit those um, fields that are in fact um, editable according to the, to the door style. And of course, uh, you know, I can format the cells, uh, their number, their alignment, the font, border patterns, and so forth. Um, all of that is sort of um, easily editable uh, directly from this uh, format menu. So for example, if I find that I want to change the font to nine point type, then I could do that. And uh, all of these would be nine point type. 
or I could go back to eight. <clears throat> Um, I can renumber these. Right? So if I need to quickly renumber all of my doors rather than go through the drawing and uh, click on each door and scroll down to its ID label here in the object info palette, it's oftentimes easier just to go through and renumber them directly here from the door schedule. Uh, I find it works better to renumber them from the highest number door to the, to the lowest. So um, um, the same is going to hold true for my uh, window schedule. Uh, this one's quite a bit simpler because um, there are fewer windows in this project, but it essentially follows the exact same um, sort of principles. I've got my database header. I'm going to um, filter everything to be um, um, the field value on schedule uh, is uh, present. Right. And in this case, this is the on schedule field that belongs to the window record. And uh, here they're numbered A, B, C. Now, in the case of a window, I don't, um, I don't list each window individually for a residential project. I have a window type A. And so I want to go ahead and show all the A's together. Right? And so to, to do that, um, I've got this little um, uh, sum uh, symbol that is there. Right. And so um, I can just uh, summarize items and that means not that's different from summing their values. I'm summarizing the, the items, which is to say every item that has the same um, key in this case, because I'm putting it in the um, key column is going to show together um, as a single line. And then I can sort them in ascending order or not sort them or ascend them or sort them in, in uh, descending order. Um, uh, then in this case, I also have a quantity, right? So we can look at this um, field right here and you can see that the way that this is shown is it's just equals count. Now, let's say I didn't know how to do that. Like I wanted to show the quantity of windows, but I, I don't know how to, how to make that work. So um, the nice thing about worksheets in VectorWorks is that um, there's a lot of um, help that VectorWorks gives you um, to get you started. So here on uh, the database, for example, uh, column, right, or actually under insert, rather, I could insert a uh, function or a criteria. Well, here I want to insert a function and it, I can scroll down here and it gives me <clears throat> a list of all of the functions that are available in VectorWorks worksheets. And um, down here is count. And it returns the number of objects that meet the specified criteria. In this case, it's getting the criteria from the criteria that we set over here by right clicking on cell number three, right? And so I'll just hit equals count, <coughs> right? And so there it is, it's inserted that for me. I didn't have to spell it and I'll hit return. And hey presto, it counts all of the uh, windows for me. Let me go ahead and close that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'll notice, and this is a deviation from previous versions of VectorWorks, 
that even though on the window schedule I have the database header showing, that database header is only showing when I'm editing the actual um, window schedule. When I display the window schedule on the drawing, it, um, it doesn't ever show. It's only for the user's benefit, it doesn't show up um, uh, in, in the drawing. And uh, I guess I should not make this too opaque, but to explain to you that the way that you um, have a schedule or a worksheet show up on a drawing is you find it in your resource manager, it lives under worksheets, and you just grab it and you just drag it onto your drawing and there it is. Now in this case, uh, the window has all these grids, the window schedule has all these grids, so all I do is I just change the line weight to none and the grid disappears. And then to get these nice rectangles, those are just um, rectangles that I've drawn and given, uh, they're, they're black rectangles with like about a 10 or 15% opacity in order to get that. Um, any questions from anyone so far? All right. Okay, well, I will keep going then. Um, so um, let's say that I um, want to create an, um, a schedule of some objects um, that are not Vectorworks plugin objects, like I've got these. Um, um, you know, I've got these uh, doors and windows. Those already come with Vectorworks record formats um, sort of built into them. Um, I don't necessarily get to see them. Um, they might be hidden. Uh, no, there they are. There's a, uh, no, they're, they're, they're hidden from me. This door record is a different one. Um, but I might have an object that, um, I want to go ahead and schedule myself. Um, so a great example of that is a lighting fixture. Right, we have a bunch of uh, uh, custom symbols that we created and these are just holdovers from years and years and years ago when I first created these. So, you know, there is absolutely nothing fancy about um, this recessed can. It's just a, a circle with some lines all right, but you can see that I've we've added this little text bubble, and it too is not fancy. Uh, it's just an octagon, uh, just a simple polygon, and then there's just this piece of text. All right, so if I wanted to create um, a, a plumbing schedule or a, a lighting schedule or whatever, um, I'm sure that if I were to use the Vectorworks libraries, all of those things would already have record formats built in. But, you know, let's say I'm not satisfied with that or I just want to um, go ahead and, and do my own. So the, the order of operations in order to create a schedule of custom objects is um, uh, you really need two things. You need a, a series of symbols, uh, ideally. They don't have to be symbols, but it works better. Um, and those are the objects that you're going to place in your drawing and that are then going to be scheduled or reported on. And then you need a record format. So um, here we've got a light fixture record. This is one that, that uh, we built our, ourselves. So let me go ahead and edit that and show you what that looks like. It's really pretty simple. Uh, it just has about eight fields. And um, each of those fields, we just created a, you know, we just basically went into the resource manager and right clicked and created a new record format. And we called it the light fixture record. And then we just started adding some fields. What are all the fields that we think we would like to see in a uh, basic light fixture record? Well, you know, they need a key. Uh, they need to be numbered, you know, A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, or whatever. 
Uh, it'd be nice if they were, if they, if we had a type, who the manufacturer is, what the model is, perhaps a description, the finish on the, the fixture, the lamping, is it LED or something else? These days, almost everything is. And then if we wanted to do some, some um, basic power density calculations, it would be great to know what the wattage is of, of each of these objects, each of these um, uh, light fixtures. Uh, so that then we could tabulate what the total wattage is and divide it by the square footage and then we'd know whether our power density was uh, too high. Uh, in other words, we just, you think of these fields as if I were to build a schedule, what are the, um, what are the headers of each of the columns that I would want to see for my schedule? So I can also create some uh, default text so uh, if you use a lot of recessed cans, you might want to make recessed can your default text for that field, but you don't have to, it could, it could, be, it could be blank. Um, so, so that's the first step, create yourself a uh, record format. And then the next step is you need a series of symbols. I just um, showed you one. I'm going to edit the 2D component of the symbol. And ideally, if you want this symbol to have a key, right, you would go ahead and build that into the symbol. And uh, then you would use a very specific command. You would have a, a, a key with a, with a text block. And under modify, you would link text to record. So link text to record only works inside a symbol. It only works on a text block. It only works on a single text block. So it's a very specific command. And you can choose which field in which record you want this text block to report. So in this case, we want the text block to report the key ID of a light fixture record. Um, probably wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to show uh, the finish uh, in a bubble or the manufacturer. And I don't need to know what type of light it is because the graphics of the symbol tells me that. So that's what that's linked to. And so now if I look, if I select that object and I look on the data tab, you can see that uh, this is an, called out as an R1. I could make it an R2, or I could make it an R3, or whatever. Right? It's an R1. It's a recessed can. This is the manufacturer, the model number. There's a more uh, detailed description, the finish, the lamping, and the wattage. That's probably a little high, but you know maybe it's seven watts. Not exactly sure. We'll just go with nine as the default. Anyway, so um, I do that for each of my symbols. So each of these symbols has likewise a text block in it that is linked to the same record format. So what I want to point out there is that we have one record format for all lighting fixtures and each lighting fixture uh, symbol is linked to that record format, but the symbols are themselves different. In other words, I can link a recessed can and a wall mounted light and a ceiling fan and a vent fan and a surface mounted light, uh, all of those I can link to the same uh, record format. I don't need a distinct record format for each distinct light or light type. Uh, remember, what the record format governs is it collects all of the columns that are going to be in my uh, schedule. So now if I go to my reflected ceiling plan, here's the light fixture schedule. All right, and let's go ahead and open that up. So you can see that the database headers are on, right? So let's look first at the criteria. It's uh, under edit criteria, right? I'm asking it to report everything, every object whose record light fixture record is present. 
and this is one that we created ourselves, you may remember, right? It's not one that comes with Vectorworks out of the box, though Vectorworks has light fixture records um, sort of analogous. It tells me there's 62 objects. And in this case, I'm very careful to exclude anything that's within a symbol or a plugin object or in my viewport annotation. Well, that's important because in my viewport annotations is my electrical legend, which itself is a symbol. And within that symbol, I have examples of the various light types. So I obviously don't want these to be counted. So that's why I'm, in, I'm excluding those from the criteria over here. I'm excluding plug-in objects, viewports, symbols, right? And so here's my R1. It's a recessed can. And here's uh, all of these, uh, you know, manufacturer model and description, the finish and so forth. And I've also got over here, you see that here's that same command count uh, that I had before. And so it's counting the total number of light fixtures for me, which is, you know, super useful for my electrical contractor. You can just get that right off the schedule if I decide to go ahead and display that. And again, if I, if I change this here, right, if I, uh, because these are bi-directional, if I change white to, I don't know, Chrome seems unlikely, right? And I could change the model number and so forth. Um, that's also going to be reflected on each individual instance of that symbol. All right, I'm just grab a light fixture here, look at it in the object info palette, and notice that it says Chrome finish over here when I look at each individual one. Now, Obviously, this doesn't change if I have a 3D model of the recess can. This doesn't suddenly make the trim kit on that 3D model Chrome, right? This is just a text block that's being reported on my schedule. Um, but it's, uh, you know, even when I have 60 of these light fixtures, it's really useful to be able to make sure that they are all consistently um, having the same uh, information. Now I've changed that to Chrome. If I change this one uh, to white, back to white, because I'm just changing it at the at a single instance, it doesn't change all of them. This one is still Chrome, right? And so when I refresh my lighting schedule, file, file recalculate active worksheet, I now, instead of saying white or chrome, Vectorworks doesn't know what to do because some are chrome, some are white. So it just gives me these three little dashes, which tells me, okay, <clears throat> I have a conflict here. I don't have consistent labeling or data for all of my objects. So what I could do, a uh, couple of things, is I could use my uh, uh, eyedropper tool and make sure I pick up the uh, record format. And I could pick up the attributes here and put it down on these two. And then um, when I recalculate, then everything is Chrome because you know I changed them all to Chrome. Or I could just overwrite and just make everything over here white. And then if I click on this one, for example, and inspect it, it will say white. Now, you know, I don't I don't have to do it this way. I could just have a worksheet and I could just manually type in um, <clears throat> uh, on a single line what the model number and the finish is and so forth and not have it linked to uh, the schedule. But it's really nice to, or not have it linked, excuse me, to the individual symbols. But it's nice to do it this way because then I can automatically count them and um, by having consistent data from symbol to symbol, I'm, uh, I'm able to capitalize on previous work that I've done. Right? There, there's a variety of benefits to that. Uh, so that's just a fairly simple example 
um, you set up a record format, you define the number of fields that you want, you can give it default content, and then you can attach that to an object, uh, specifically a symbol, and then you've got, uh, you've got some a bit of automatic scheduling going on. Um, now these happen to be hybrid symbols. They have 3D components as well as 2D components, but this would work just fine. This method would work just fine for something that was strictly 3D. And for that matter, or strictly 2D, and for that matter, it would also work just fine for something that's strictly um, uh, 2D as well, uh, or 3D. And it doesn't have to display the key, right? I could still do automatic scheduling and not show this R1. <clears throat> it's just that uh, it's nice to be have R1 on the schedule be consistent with the R1 that's on the drawing that's keyed to the to the object. So I've been trying to sort of migrate from out of the box worksheets to something that is very similar to an out of the box worksheet that you've customized somewhat. Um, and then now I've just shown you something that is essentially, you know, built from scratch. Um, let's look at some other instances of things that are that are completely built from scratch. And uh, I'm going to need to um, share a different file. Um, so first I have to open the file that I want. So um, here's a project I did a few years ago and that I used to um, demonstrate some really uh, pretty custom worksheets. Uh, in this case, there's a rainwater harvester uh, worksheet. Let's look at that. So the vast majority of this is, um, uh, you know, most of these cells are just text cells. Um, and there are no database headers in this. In other words, it's this worksheet is not um, pulling data from a collection of plugin objects. It's not a schedule. It's a worksheet per se. Um, and all of the cells in yellow are cells that I'm manually inputting. So I'm defining the number of occupants for the building. I'm defining the daily consumption uh, because it's a worksheet. Um, if I typed 10 gallons, then that would treat that as text. So I want to be able to calculate with that field. And so under format, I just have under number, this is just a decimal number, but I have the the uh, space GAL as a trailer. So for example, I could format this cell and make the drought time right, 100 days. And that doesn't change any of my calculations. It's just adding the word days, but I can still calculate all that. So this worksheet is based on um, calculations recommended by the Texas Handbook of um, Rainwater Harvesting, I think it's called. Um, and there are various formulas for calculating how much um, catchment you can get off of a given roof. Um, where I am um, actually using this as a dynamic design tool is that I have this um, uh, field here that shows 3,016 square feet is pulling that information from the model. And uh, let's just kind of tease that apart. So in the cell, it says equals roof area underscore total project n equals rain. So uh, that's a lot to remember. So let's just kind of break it down and um, see how we would do this. So I'm just going to leave that cell alone, but essentially going to do the, the very same thing. So whenever you want to uh, do some sort of a function or a calculation in a worksheet in Vectorworks, it's like numbers or Excel or any anything else. 
you would start out with an equal sign. So you type an equal sign and that immediately alerts Vectorworks that you're not just typing some text that you want to display, but you're, you're actually wanting to do some calculating. here. And I know that I want to gather the uh, plan projected area of some uh, roofs, right? In other words, not the surface area of the roof that a roofer would want to know perpendicular to the roof plane, but rather the plan projected area of the roof. So that's going to be uh, dependent on uh, the um, two roofs uh, with the identical footprint, but at different roof pitches are going to harvest the exact same amount of water because it's just what the sky sees as it's looking down in plan, right? So, but I don't know what that command is. I'm, um, you know, uh, that's kind of esoteric. So under insert, I'm going to go to my function and um, I'm going to scroll down here and um, look, I start seeing some things that are, that say roof on it. Well, that's promising. So here's, uh, oh, well, here's roof area total projected and the description, it returns the total area of a roof projected on the active layer plane. Well, that's perfect. That's exactly what I need. So I'll just go ahead and uh, hit return. And so Vectorworks automatically fills in that uh, function for me. And it adds a little open parentheses and a close parentheses. So I'm going to click my cursor inside between those two parentheses and back to insert. Now I've got the function that I want. I, I want the criteria, right? I, I don't necessarily want every roof in the project to give me its area because I might not be harvesting from every single roof. Um, so I could dif differentiate roofs that I harvest from by assigning them to a different class or putting them in a different layer, for example. In this case, what I've done is um, I have <coughs> um, given every roof that I'm uh, harvesting rainwater from a name that has the word rain in it. And so under custom, I'm going to choose name down here because Vectorworks objects can have be assigned names. And I'm going to put a wild card in here, which is an asterisk, and then rain, and then an asterisk. So it's only going to report objects that have the word rain within their own unique name. So I could have rain roof one, rain roof two, rain roof three, and so on and so forth. So I'll hit OK and hit return. And you can see that it gives me a total area of 3,016 gallons, right? So naming things in Vectorworks is a great way to tag them in a way so that you can then use them for, uh, for your worksheets. Um, you got to remember what you name things. And keep in mind, an object in Vectorworks has to have a unique name. So then I also have um, some, some of this rainwater that I'm irrigating. Um, I think in this file, I went ahead and um, uh, just input the number, but I could also query that um, garden. That square footage could be given from a series of polygons that were representing my planted areas, right, and so forth. And then um, I just input the rainfall data for my location. And then based on the number of occupants, you can see that it's doing all these different calculations. So if I assume a 15 foot diameter cistern, if I up my occupancy from two occupants to three, then I need a cistern that's 21 feet tall instead of one that is just 20 and a half feet tall. If I double my occupancy, well, now I need a cistern that is 22 feet tall. And you're probably wondering, well, why isn't the cistern doubling in height? Because a lot of that cistern is capturing water for irrigation, which is um, independent of the number of, of occupants, right? Or likewise, if I assume that droughts are getting shorter, which is very unlikely, uh, then I would need less of a, less of a tank. Um, 
So that's, that's an example of how I can just use a worksheet, essentially the same way I would build an, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, but the difference is, is that um, here the spreadsheet is built into the Vectorworks model and one or more fields uh, or cells in that, in that worksheet can be um, queried from the model geometry. So for example, if I increase my roof overhangs in order to uh, better shade some of the windows, what does that mean? Does that have any impact, good or bad, um, significant or, or not on my cistern size? Right? So I might justify adding some roof overhangs, both for shading, but also because I can, the more roof I have, um, theoretically, the smaller cistern I can get away with because I'm, when it rains, I'm harvesting a lot all at once. So that's one example. Um, uh, another example is a uh, thermal chimney. Um, so I won't go too much into it because really it operates on the same uh, principles as the rainwater harvesting. There's a lot of cells here that are just doing calculations. Uh, there's some input that is assumed on my part, temperatures, for example, because there's no um, um, uh, computational fluid dynamics or uh, modeling in Vectorworks. Um, but it's querying the um, apertures um, of the upper and lower areas from the model, or at least it, it can, as well as the, the height difference between the two. So here I've got a, a Z center of a couple of objects and um, it's calculating their height difference. So as I move the object up or down in the model, it will go ahead and uh, update my uh, thermal chimney um, airflow rate uh, based on its uh, position in height. Uh, another example of uh, a custom worksheet would be uh, these reverberation calculations. <coughs> Um, so here, I, uh, if, I think I just manually uh, gathered the surface area of various objects, but I could have um, uh, also used uh, some area functions. And so I could assign uh, an absorption coefficient for each of those materials at various frequency ranges and multiply all those together and calculate a total reverberation time based on the volume of the room. And so I can uh, figure out if I need more sound absorptive material in order to diminish the reverberation time so that the space is uh, less echoey um, and um, easier for conversation, or if I wanted to increase the reverberation time for performance, for example, then I could, uh, I would have a, a pretty good idea of um, which materials to um, to add, so I can I can use this as a kind of as a what if what happens if I you know double the amount of chipboard and have the amount of um, uh, uh, acoustic ceiling material, for example, or, or vice versa. So again, most of these cells are just um, <clears throat> uh, you know just plain old cells that I'm just typing uh, words or or text or values into, uh, but, I, but I can get those from the model. And the real benefit to these kinds of worksheets is when they are querying the model as much as possible so that as I'm um, making changes to the model, then the worksheet is, is changing accordingly. Um, and then lastly, uh, for this one, um, I did a, a takeoff worksheet. Better look at the right file. Yeah, I think this is the one I want. Zoom in a little closer. Um, so here uh, I've got a basic material takeoff table. Um, so for example, um, if I wanted to know what my total uh, exterior wall is, in this case, 
once again, this is very similar to what I was showing you earlier for how to build a little script to figure out the roof area, right? Um, here I've got the wall area gross and then it's got a wall style. So I'll just do equal and then insert a function. Uh, here, here are all my various wall functions, right? So um, I could do my gross wall area, which would uh, give the total wall area or net, which would take out the doors and windows. I'm going to use gross wall area because that gives me um, uh, a little bit of overage in my takeoffs. But if I wanted to be more uh, precise and you know let the contractor know that I've taken out doors and windows, then I might use net. And uh, then inside that parentheses, I would go ahead and click insert and specify the criteria and I can choose uh, wall style, right? And then it lists all of the wall styles that are in my document, that are in my file. So here's all my exterior um, wall. So there's a exterior two by six insulated, for example, and that might be a different wall style than, and that is a, very hard text style to, to read. Right. So I don't have any of that, right? In this case, um, oh, well, I think I messed it up when I was, there we go. Maybe use a slightly easier font to read. There we go. So 34 gets the same amount because it's the same cell as before. So each of these, right, I have a total, I have a different, um, I have net and gross. I have uninsulated walls for my garage. I, I've got how much uh, siding there is. Um, I got rid of core 10 metal siding in one design iteration, so that went to zero. Uh, how much brick veneer there is for the exterior and the interior, and so on and so forth. Um, for uh, uh, painted walls and ceilings, again, here I'm querying um, classes, not wall styles, because I've got ceiling objects. Um, and then here I've got the same sort of, <clears throat> um, uh, I've got my electrical fixtures. So each of my uh, wall mounted lights, right? It's just counting the number of symbols with that name. It's counting the number of lip to pars. It's counting the number of pendants um, and so forth. <clears throat> so just by using wall styles and slabs and roofs, I can, and just the appropriate uh, type of, of querying, I can uh, start to build some material takeoffs uh, and perhaps you know, provide those to perspective um, uh, trades or general contractors, you know, do a stucco takeoff, for example, or, uh, um, uh, you know, a wood flooring takeoff. And um, that can be, that can be very, very useful. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to show you uh, is, um, Francois, I have a question about this before you move on. Can I ask? Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Um, I was getting really tired of hearing myself talk, so thank you for asking a question. <laughs> I know, and you can't, we all turn off our cameras and our, and our microphones and you feel like you're talking to, your, to a wall. Um, here in column C, yep. is there a way to switch column C to show the uh, calculation, the ca how it's getting the number so I can double check that I haven't made a mistake in my labels? Um, real, no, I don't think so. I think the only thing I can do, I mean, what, what you could do is just, um, I, I, here's what something, here's a kludge. Would, would you be satisfied with a kludge? <laughs> okay. You can click uh, on I'm, it and I'm, look at it, but I like to check the whole, the whole Right, table. right. So here's, here's, here's what I would do is I would take column C and I would copy it. And then I would, 
insert a column after D. Okay. Well, I'll just do it this way. Here we go. I'll delete this column. All right, so I would then just take all of these and copy them and paste them in another column. And then I would go to each one. This could be a little laborious. And I would uh, strip out the equal sign. Oh, that's kind of clever. There might be a more elegant way to do this. Um, and so then I could, in fact, kind of eyeball it. And, and Becky, that's a really great question because um, it, I, I want to underscore that worksheets are really powerful, um, but they also require a lot of care and finesse. And um, you know, if you, for example, I mean, this is a great example right here, right? If you change the name of one of your wall styles, but you don't update your worksheet, suddenly your worksheet is going to be giving you erroneous numbers. And you won't, it's not going to flash red and tell you, hey, you changed the name of a wall style and it's over in this worksheet over here, there, you know? It's, it's kind of on you to really look at your worksheets, particularly before you send out your schedules and your, um, you know, and your takeoffs to, uh, you know, outside the office or whatever, and, and just kind of do a reality check. And it's like, does it, does it seem plausible that I would have a thousand square feet of exterior brick veneer on this project? My goodness, I've got an entire wing that's all brick. I should have five times that amount of bricks. Something's, something's wrong here, right? So, so it's, it's, really, it's really incumbent upon you to, to be very careful with your worksheets. And, uh, you know, they, they do take a fair amount of, of work to set up, but you, you also need to just double check on them just because you set up a worksheet, especially if it's a worksheet that you, you know, migrate forward from project to project to project to project. It's great that you've been able to leverage all of that work and use it over and over and over again, but um, boy, uh, double double check because because um, they can give you a false sense of security if you're not careful. Okay, thanks. That's yeah. helpful. Yeah, great question. Um, so. Um, the, hopefully next year there will be a, there will be a Vectorworks Design Summit. And um, I, I know I've mentioned this before and um, I'll just say it again because it's, it's super helpful. Uh, uh, Michael Klars and uh, Pat Stanford have given a talk at a couple of the design summits that I've been to called Killer Worksheets. And at just like, you know, worksheets, right? Come on. But they, that is just like one of the best presentations I've, I've ever seen. It's really cool. And so I just wanted to leave you with, um, with one of their worksheets that I think is really um, super useful. Um, uh, if I can uh, remember what I did with it. Yeah, so over in my resource manager here. Uh, oh, I'm looking at record formats. That's why I can't see it. All right, there we go. So they, they've got uh, Michael and, and Pat, I think maybe Michael might have built this worksheet, has a worksheet called Tell Me About Yourself. And I'm going to open that. And um, 
uh, what it does is um, it simply reports some various facts about um, objects in your drawing. So, um, and, uh, and you can change it, right? So, um, in this case, it's got, uh, it tells you layer, it tells you class, plane, uh, angle, type, and so forth. Um, this is not something you would ever share with a client, right? This is, this is a utility for your own internal use as a Vectorworks user. And so, for example, under, uh, if we look at the edit criteria for this worksheet, it's, it's listing the type is door. Well, let's look at uh, type is wall. Okay, so I've just changed it. There are 100 walls in this little project, exactly 100, right? And so it recalculates it very, very, very quickly. And it starts to tell me all sorts of interesting things about my walls. So for example, I have a bunch of walls on the slab one layer, right? And so I can start uh, looking through those and here are my wall interiors. And uh, what I really love about this worksheet is that it's got a column where it shows the angle. And so you'll notice that these walls are 90, 180, negative 90, 180, zero, right? So all of these walls are orthogonal. I'm kind of hoping that I have one in here that isn't. Because it's a, it's a very common drafting thing sometimes where you're, you're drafting away and you, you draw a wall. And it's not exactly orthogonal. It's just a little itty bitty bit off, right? So ah, sadly, I don't have one. I was just, uh, I must have cleaned this file up. But um, anyway, this is, this is a super useful little worksheet. Um, and if you're curious, the command for angle is equals angle. So you could create your own little, you know, if you've, if you've got um, funny angled walls in your projects and, you know, you like to keep them all orthog orth orthogonal, you could very quickly build a worksheet for yourself. Uh, for the criteria, you would just filter out walls and you would just have a column that would show what their angles are. And then if you find one that's either, maybe it's on the wrong layer or it's in the wrong um, class um, or, you know, whatever, uh, or it's at the wrong angle, you could immediately right click on its cell and select the object and uh, hey presto, um, there it is. Just selected that wall right there. So, um, and they, they've got all sorts of fun stuff. So, you know, um, I, I, before the, our meeting today, I looked online to see if Vectorworks had posted their killer worksheets talk uh, up at, at Vectorworks University, and, and I did not see it, but I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for it because uh, it's just, it's, very boss and uh, an inspiration. Anyway, um, I've managed to drone on and on for a long period of time and I would be very happy to answer any other questions and let's see if I can um, just unmute everybody in one fell swoop. Is that is that possible? Unmute all, yeah, there we go. Boop. So anyway, if anyone has any questions in the last couple of minutes, please. Completely self-explanatory. <laughs> I seriously doubt that, um, but hopefully it's hopefully it'll 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 you know be a bit of an inspiration to um, for you to you know delve into worksheets or deeper into worksheets if you've already using them. But um, uh, they, they are ver they are very cool. Well. Um, if there are no questions, I'm going to go get that cup of coffee and um, wish you all a great rest of your day. And um, if you have any topics that you're dying to see at our next uh, user group meeting, uh, please do let me know. And um, if you have any questions that occur to you afterwards, you know, 
email me, of course. And um, thank you very much for, for being here. Thanks, Sharma. Thank I think it was great. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye.